Are you ready? Can crush us. It don't really get no better than this. The podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the can crush a nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Gotta shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah, this the show you need an end. It ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. Hi, this is Volos the Freak, and you're listening to Can Crushers. The very best in wrestling talk and news with your host, none other than the multi-talented actor, Mark E. Mark. What? Mark the Mark? Who the hell is that? Well, that explains what happened to his voice. I know. We need to start writing this stuff down. This is how mistakes happen. Okay, we could just edit all this out. This time, make sure you send the right version. I don't care. It's about having fun. Let's just take it from the top. Let's make sure Can Crushers, the very best in wrestling and talk news. And this is the host, Mark V. Mark. He's a nice guy. I enjoy my time talking with him. He deserves the best. Let's just do this, okay? All right. Thank you. Let's just go. Well, so Volos the Freak got a little confused. I understand. I am the host, Mark V. Mark, of Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. And this is another spotlight show. It is spotlighting wrestlers from every era all over the place, referees, owners, promoters, anything you have to go. And this week, we have a commissioner. The commish of High Ground Professional Wrestling is coming on the show to talk about, of course, High Ground, her authority there, but she also had an in-ring career beforehand, so we need to talk everything about that. My guest is none other then Belladonna. Wow. Long time in the business. We're going to wait on all the numbers until she comes on the show and tells us because it's a litany. This is really cool. And maybe we get some road stories. Maybe we get a little of this. Maybe we get a little of that. And what's up? What is essentially her goal in high ground, for high ground, herself, whatever? Just throw them all out there. So we're going to find out on this week's Can Crushers Wrestling Spotlight. But, of course, we have to do our due diligence. Guys, girls, everybody, go over and order some shirts from Collar and Elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans at Collar and Elbow have. Buy it all up. And then use the amazing promo code Can Crushers. All one word, capital C and can, capital C and crushers. You'll save 10% off your entire order. That's a great deal. In these days, saving 10% is awesome because you don't get a lot of deals across the board anywhere. Hey, if you'd like to be a part of the show too, reach out on any of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter. It's all at CanCrusher69. Slide into a DM and say, I'd like to be on the show. Or CanCrusher69 at gmail.com. The old school way, apparently it's what it's called. And you'll get scheduled for the show too. That's really awesome. Where can you listen to us? Well, you're listening to us on your favorite one right now. Probably Spotify, maybe iTunes, maybe Alexa, maybe iHeartRadio, maybe Podrama, maybe IMDB. All of these places, plus many more. You can listen to Can Crushers, whatever your favorite outlet is. Plug in Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast, and you'll be able to have our entire archive of shows. You know we're getting close to 500. We're going to beat that to you. 500 episodes coming up real soon. Interviews, legends, rising stars, people just signing with WWE, people just signing with AEW. We get them. We get them. And, of course, we really, really, really got a stronghold on the independents. And we love talking to everybody to find out their story along with this whole group of high ground professional wrestling so yeah that's what it is make sure you make sure you do all of that 
I know it's a lot of homework, but you got time. You got time. All right. Here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. Remember, the promo code is CANCRUSHERS to save 10%. We'll be back. We'll have Belladonna on to talk wrestling, which is what this podcast is about. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Nathaniel Cunningham, and not only is Can Crushers podcast the home of the bad fellows, but it is also the home of high ground pro wrestling. And welcome back to Can Crushers, guys. You heard how excited I was to have the commissioner, essentially somebody that signs my checks to at high ground professional wrestling on the show, Miss Belladonna. Belladonna, how are you doing tonight? I am well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic to be talking to you. And that's not a shoot. I (laughs) honestly love this woman. Give me hate if you want to or ever. I love this woman because what she does behind the curtain, in the ring, by the apron, whatever, she does it for the high ground fans. Absolutely. It's that easy. That's a podcast. All right, bye. No. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone. <laughs> no, and it's an honor to be on here. You know, uh, I don't get to do a lot of interacting with you in the back, but, uh, you know, what you do for High Ground is absolutely outstanding, and it's greatly appreciated. So please do know that. Oh, stop, stop. No, no, thank you. No, I, I really, <laughs> I love it. Um, so it's not about me, it's about you. So we have to do, we have to jump into time warp and go all the way back about five years ago, because you're young, about five years ago when you were a little Belladonna, who introduced you to this crazy business of professional wrestling that's in our blood and we just can't get enough of it? So the first time I remember ever watching wrestling was with my brother and my mother. Um, from there, it kind of morphed into, you know, separation, um, from me, from my mother and my brother moved away, um, really found out who I was once I got out from underneath them and, um, grew to who I am now. So, um, that's how I got, that's how I got hooked. Can you remember first match or first company or anything like that that you you saw on tv or watched or were you there wwf which is now wwe was the first um luna vachon sherry martell my absolute favorite they they inspired me in the business um they both also inspired me outside of the business but i remember Brutus the Barber Beefcake and I had the biggest crush on him. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, huh? That's yep. <laughs> you, I, I love the man. He he's part of my tattoo sleeve as well. But you don't hear many people saying that you, they had a crush on him. So Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Was it when he was the barber or did you actually real like I thought he did his best stuff when he was tag team with Valentine though. I all throughout it all. I I had the chance to meet him after he had that. Um, I believe it was the parasailing accident that shattered his face. Um, wasn't his best time. He didn't know who I was. I didn't have the mouth that I do, and he kind of just blew me off. And Hulk Hogan started yelling at him. So, <laughs> wow. Yep. That's some. That's a little check in your. Uh... In your book, Hogan's yelling at Beefcake over you. Nice. 
Nice. Well, I don't know if it was about me or if it was, that's not how you treat a fan. But oh. you want to think it was because it was me? Go for it. It was because of you. You were the oh. fan. So sure. it was your, it's, it's your story, but I'm going to tell it. Is that okay? Okay. All right. You can tell it however you would like as long as I come out smelling like a rose. And you do in this. And you do. And you do all the time, <laughs> by the way, too. So, you, oh, my God. I'm hitting on you on the podcast, by the way. Um, <laughs> you brought up Sherry and Luna. Who else did you really like back then besides heartthrobs? Oh, the Heart Foundation. Um I really like the Heart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, uh, the Killer Bees. Like, I really like tag teams. Can you tell? No. Um, <laughs> that That's when I will say this till the day that I die. That was the best tag team scene ever. You've just named oh. my favorites. Throw in Rock and Roll Express and Midnight Express as well. The Wild Samoans, above and beyond, yep. hands down, greatest. Yep. Yep. And oh, we're getting there. So don't worry, we're getting there. <laughs> so you found wrestling, you loved wrestling. What got you in the mindset that said, hey, I'm going to get into wrestling as you were growing up through like middle school, high school? Because I tell everybody that comes on the show, you have it in the back of your mind, but you just don't know yet. So you're going to do basketball, baseball or something, and it's essentially conditioning for you to get into wrestling, right? Well, no, I never wanted to get into the business because at that point in time, it was all about being the belle of the ball. Um, so, you know, did not have that chance growing up in Boston proper, going out, representing my family that I that raised me to be who I am and doing that is what was my focus. It wasn't until a relationship ended and I did the, uh uh-huh, kiss my foot, I'll do what I want, that I got into the business. You're reading my notes. So transition (laughs) into that then, when was, I I know you touched on it, a relationship, but when was that uh aha moment that I'm going and I'm signing up and I'm going to go see the training center that you're going to tell us about? Trust me, I know it, but, you know, I I want some suspense. (laughs) So, um, started dating somebody when I was about 20. That's kind of when it was kind of, you know, young, doe-eyed. He, the sun rose and set on him. He was a wrestler. Um, probably about two, three years down the road after with dating him, that I kind of went, hey, what do you think if I became a manager or a referee, and we started traveling together. Uh, His response was, yeah, if you think you can handle it, which was his way of saying no. Oof. So when we broke up at four years, we were together five, so it was like four or five years, um, I did the, yep, kiss my foot, I'll show you how good I am, because you know how good I am. Yeah. I, yes, I do, and along with everybody else, does know So how do you decide to go to your training center that you went to? I'm I'm getting to that then too. (laughs) Um, It was because of who owned it. Mm -hmm. That's why. Okay. Do you you want to say who it was? Off of the wild Samoan. It was a toss up between the heart school up in Alberta or Alberta, Canada. Sorry. Um, But I really liked the connection that I got with Pops. Yeah, and and I love that because I've heard that name a few times at High Ground, and that that means a lot, that it's family, essentially. And then I'll I'll pause on you for a second, which which is High Ground is doing. We are a giant family. This is where we're going to put High Ground over for a little bit. We are a giant family. (laughs) We're going to fight. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But all that we want to do is make high ground the best, right? Absolutely. Um, Yeah, you have your family members who you cannot stand, bad fellas. Um, But, you know, you're still their family, so you kind of got to tolerate the little gnat that's flying around your face all the time. Um, And then you have the family that you would bend over backwards and provide them whatever you can. 
still haven't really found that one yet. But yes, we are a family and we do our best to look out for each other and to make sure that, um, you know, we're growing strong together. United we stand, divided we fall. Touche. Completely agree. But back to going to hang out with Samoans at, at training center and everything. That's what he kind of put into your mindset that, you know, take care of each other, this, that, and the other thing. But let's talk about your training now. Because these are the great stories that come out. You go to training day one where you're like, oh, this, this, I'm done. Or did you like, I'm powering through no matter what happens in my life? Oh, it powered through. It was it was the mindset of I'm going to prove to you, to the X, that yes, <laughs> it was I was bound and determined. There was no stopping me. Was there anything, though, that was tougher than the other, essentially? Like, people were like, oh, the ropes. I've ran the ropes Back before. Bump. Back bump. Yeah, because it's unnatural, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You prevent yourself from falling. Yeah. But you do that when you're in the ring, you're going to break your wrist, you're going to break your arm, you're going to break your hand, you're going to break your shoulder. It, it's Your it's neck. Not a good thing. Any, yeah. 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 Do you remember first match? I know you do. So I, this is, you know, <laughs> that question. Do you remember first match? And do you ever go back and watch it again? No, I don't go back and watch it. Um, at that time, WXW kind of had the sole pro- pro- prior. Pro- pro- no, yeah, if I could speak today, right? They owned the rights. Um, and they did not release videos to us. So, no, I have not ever watched it. It was um, against Jessica Daly. And it was in what used to be the Days Inn in Allentown, Pennsylvania, right off of 309. It's now a different hotel name. I don't even know. Um, And it was right before a live TV taping. That's the history of Allentown in professional wrestling. Oh, is that, no. amazing. I'm going to take that back. No, it was Hazleton. Oh, the even second Hazel- match. Okay. The second match, which was the following week, was TV. With Hazleton, too. It's, yeah. You know, they, that was their, that was WWF circuit then. Boom, 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 boom. And it was yep. that side of Pennsylvania, because on our side, we had Pittsburgh and Erie. They'd come every once in a while. Right. And, and they were house shows. They were never really a taping there or anything. You you know, Yin's on that side had the mm-hmm. tapings and everything. And it was just so, as a child, I bugged my parents. Can we go? They're like, it's like <laughs> six and a half hours away, Mark. No, we're not taking you there. I was also the one on our trip to Florida. I asked if we could stop at the Omni on the way down to Atlanta. And mm-hmm. my parents shut me down for that tour. Like, we're not going to a two-hour taping on a Tuesday night for W oh, uh, back then NWA. Not happening. I'm like, <laughs> you guys are a horrible parent. No, I'm kidding. I love both of my parents. But back then, it, it was devastating. It grew you in character. You could tell me that. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at you can't always get what you want unless you're me. Right. And exactly. And that's perfect. So I want to ask you this, and I'm going to pause real quick to say, don't tell me. Who is Belladonna? And you brought up one, because I normally throw three names out there. You brought up Sensational Sherry. Clearly saw Sensational Sherry in you, you know, uh, attitude, just, you know, your demeanor, your walk and everything. Go a little new school for people that still, I'm disappointed because a lot of people still don't know who Sensational Sherry is. They have not done their homework. Mm. And it's horrible. Shame on, Shame on them. Um, That same type of thing then, I'll, I'll show, I'll throw a Charlotte Flair out there. No. Okay. All right. Wait, wait one second. <laughs> and, and then the other one, I was I, I was on the fence 
between Luna. You brought up Luna, but I was on the fence between Luna or maybe like a Wendy slash Heidi Lee Morgan like uh, combo or something like that. You mm-hmm. you could snap at any time. I didn't. Again, have not watched matches, so I can't say that's what you were in the ring. I'm just like looking at this persona now. Luna was there, but I didn't write it down. I, so, so Charlotte's Shame. definitely off the book. Shame on you. I, I'm. I know. I know. Oh, I'll pay for it on August 12th. I'm sure. Yes, you will. So, who are um, your three then? Oh, you know, I can't get past Luna first and foremost, Sherry. Strong second. Oh, I'm trying to think of a third. And and I don't like nowadays wrestling. I don't watch it now except for at high ground. I don't go to any independent shows. I don't do WWE. I find having been retired for the length of time that I have been that I get more mad at the people who are in the ring because they do something stupid. So I choose not to participate. Um, so, oh, you're making me. If you only have two, that's okay. I, I mean, I always go three because I, I like the number three. But some people have said I only have two. So, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking – you know, a little bit of Tracy Brooks, a little bit of Beth Phoenix. Okay. With how they're they are in the ring, um, having worked with them and against them, yeah. Okay, I, I I can see I can now see Beth, and not shame on me. I always forget Beth because of what she has done recently on WWE, and that's mm-hmm. again shame on me because what she did in the past was phenomenal. Now it's WWE. Right? Right. Yeah. No, I'm talking about before right. she was WWE. Right. Okay. So do we get a road story or something from you that, you know, oh it, is pretty awesome before we uh, do one more or a couple? Oh, there's a ton more questions, but this is essentially <laughs> road story time. So oh, let me see. So to, to kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, because I have to give you the background of this story. So when I started at the Wild Samoan Pro Wrestling Training Center, Molson was the head trainer. Okay. Molson got fired very quickly from training me, and I might be one of the last female workers Pops trained. Wow. Might. Um, so fast forward a couple of years down the road. Um, Molson, Mana, the Polynesian warrior, and I were driving up and down the East Coast. Um, And I, you know, on the road, you have the rule, everybody stays awake. Right. Well, when you have a choir of snores and the two boys saying, no, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm not sleeping. That's my story. <laughs> so if you ever have the chance to meet Mana, which I don't know if you will because he's back over in Australia. Um, yeah, he could probably tell you a little bit more on his side of the story. Molson, who cares? Okay. Molson, who cares? Listen. I'm trying to think. Wait, wait. I'm oh. trying to think because that was a very short one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is your time. You can tell 20. I'm just sitting back and listening because I said these are the things that I love. You because you find out about, you know, the wrestling, the golden <laughs> age, the the love of wrestling that we have. Right. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So there was a time um, I kind of put Belladonna on hold, wanted to kind of see a different lifestyle. Um, you know, Belladonna, Boston proper gold, silver spoon, any kind, you know, platinum, titanium spoon in the mouth. That is what who Belladonna is. Um, wanted to kind of see in wrestling, like what the blue collar world was. Found out the blue collar world um, 
met somebody who turned out to be my best friend and my tag team partner. And she and I figured out stuff down in Mudlick, Kentucky. And we became the moonshiners. We were hillbillies. We were, well, not hillbillies. We were rednecks. Um, we were traveling up to some boom town in way north Vermont, almost to Canada. And we were driving across um, Lake Champlain, if you've ever heard of it, right up there, yep. up at the top, New York and Vermont. Well, there is, uh, Lake Champlain has their own Loch Ness called Champ. So driving across and having grown up in Boston, you do hear about some of the stories up there. So driving across the lake, I was telling Debbie about Champ and the possibility of how like he's been known to come up to the cars and up on the, oh, you know, just, you know, telling her the stories about our Loch Ness up in Vermont. And at one point, because I was driving, she's like, is that it over there? <laughs> It is. And it, it wasn't. It was a boat. And I was like, yeah, nice try, girl. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely that. It's a boat. Nice. <laughs> but it was far away, so I could understand. It didn't have the sail, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The sail was down. There was no other things. that. But it, it was Loch Ness. Yeah, it was Champ. Exactly. Exactly. You moonshiners. Um do you like moonshine off the record or still on the record on the podcast, but <laughs> random I meant, do you like moonshine? Um, it, it all depends. Yeah, okay. It all depends because Boston okay. proper. I mean, oof, I, I don't think moonshine fits Boston proper. Well, told you there was a point in there time was... where I went down to Kentucky and learned to live down there. Right. So, Blue you know, collaring you... it up. Oh, that was more like brown coloring. Thank you. <laughs> Not showering. No outhouse. Yeah, that. All that. No, I shower. Thank you. I know. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Let's pause from wrestling for a second. Find oh. out a little bit about Belladonna with my like three silly questions, essentially, part of the show. Most famous person you have in your contacts. And you can't say me. I know I'm in your contacts, but come on. You can't say me. I'm thinking. Alpha. Yeah. Pops. Yeah, I, I kind of figured that was an easy one, right? That That's pretty easy. <laughs> Gangrel. Gangrel. Nice. Alpha Junior. All right, now you're just showing everybody up. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite place that you've ever been and like wrestled favorite play oh hazelton hazelton the wxw arena in hazelton absolutely that is that's my roots okay now besides wrestling like oh, up and down you, you, you traveled forever is, is there some place in north carolina or you'd be like oh man this would be a great place to come when belladonna yeah. retires really? You want to know that? Oh, geez. Uh, well, Belladonna has retired. This is her form of coming out of retirement. Right. Very popular belief. Uh, I do enjoy Wildwood. Oh, Wildwood's beautiful. I agree. But, and this is going to sound really corny, I also like Cape Cod. Mm. I get it. I get it. Well, come on now. You want to get away from where you're from, you know? Right. Yeah, I I completely agree. I especially me in the middle of the woods up here. Yeah, I I agree. Nothing wrong with the woods. No, man. nothing wrong with the woods. I I agree, but I'm just saying like anytime I get to go and do some chilling like that, I'm going. <laughs> day off stuff. Like Belladonna is going to Day off. I know. I I I hear this. <laughs> I hear this, but, you know, Belladonna does get one of those days off. What does she like to do? How does she like just to chill? And, you know, normally this is where I ask the, and I'm going to do this, and some of them are going to crack me in the face, the air quotes kids 
what video games you like to play, this, that, and the other thing. But like, when you unwind, what do you like to do? I'm thinking because I'm like being commissioner at high ground. You, there is no day off, right? Um, probably getting a full body massage, spa day, spa day, spa day. Okay. Yeah. All right. With a nice mimosa. Ooh, that was thrown in there at the last second. I love that. I love that. (laughs) Or seven. (laughs) Mm, You can handle it. Okay. (laughs) Wrestling has changed from the time that you got into the business until now and this, that, and the other thing. And and there's like craziness sometimes. There's non-craziness. If there's one thing that is essentially grinded your gears for the years and you Mm. could wave your magic wand over it and it's gone. History's gone. What would it be? You don't have enough time. I do because I knew this one would really grind your gears. I have been waiting to ask you this for about six months now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let me see the politics. I'm not one for politics. I'm one that is, for transparency, transparency and honesty. If you're going to say you're going to do something, then you need to do it. The backstabbing, you know, saying one thing to somebody and then turning around behind their back and running your mouth about it, or not just the person or a tag team or a federation, like just the backstabbing in general, because eventually it comes around and you're the one whose throat is going to get cut. Um, a lot of wrestlers do not think that promoters talk, um, and sometimes they do and people don't know it. So, you know, people talk, you can't hide secrets. You can't keep secrets. Um, and eventually what is being said is going to get back. And yes, everything has a grain of truth in it because sometimes the stories are not right or proper as to how they happened, but there's always that grain. And when you have somebody coming back, or if you have five different people coming back about one person and it's the same story, you can't find, you can't say there's one grain of sand that's true and the rest is false because if the five stories are the exact same, then something Something's that off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, how women are treated. Thank you. And still, I thought this was going to be your number one, honestly, but thank you. Um, you know what? If a girl, if a woman doesn't have a backbone and put somebody in their place, that's on them. There are, there are limits. Um, but if you don't have, if you're not willing to use your mouth and stand up for yourself, then then that's on you. Um, But no, how women are treated. um, You know, it's a lot of times TNA. Yeah. And, you know, I'm more of a Sophia Loren. It's the illusion. It's the, you can see it, but you can't see it. It, it, listen, it is a guy. I, I will say this. That means more than it being right in your face. I'll leave that yeah, out well, there. Yeah. You are one of the few. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are welcome. So there's a lot that you would love to change, which I, I'm glad you brought those all up because they all noteworthy needs to happen. And, and it's some might have one that's okay. Some might not have any of that. It's okay, but it all just needs to be completely eliminated because I, again, High ground, family. That's what we're trying to do. And essentially, I'm going to say we, we as a group just want none of that at all. No, no. And, you know, are there promoters that don't like other promoters? Absolutely. Are Is there still blackballing? Yes. At high ground, we're not going to say you can't work for that promoter. We're going to be like, hey. You want to work for them, that's your choice. But just know 
that's your choice. You know what I mean? Like right. we're, we're going to be here, yeah. but, but just watch your back. You know, I think that what has been done with high ground and their training center is up front. Molson love him or hate him or tolerate him. Um, wears his heart on his sleeve and sometimes is a knee jerk reaction. Kind of like when the Tubelard shoved my Barracuda and made my Barracuda fall into me. Yeah. That was a knee jerk reaction. That was him going off without knowing the whole story. So we try very hard not to do that. I don't run my mouth negatively against anybody. If Anybody has anything to say to me, they can come up to me. I'm, I try to be as approachable and open as possible. If somebody comes up to me and asks me for my opinion on something, I will give it without, well, no, I will censor. Good, bad, or ugly. I'm going to say it. I might not be like, oh, that was a crappy match and you screwed up, blah, 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 blah. But I might say I might say that, but in a different way. Right. The so, the motherly way, right? Um. Maybe. No, I have two children. I basically tell them, "Suck it up, Buttercup." <laughs> do. I do. I, I do. You can ask them. No, I know. I don't have to ask them. I've seen it. I'm all right with that. <laughs> when you were. In ring, and let's say at any time, anybody, anything, and I think I know the answer to this, but I have a, a stipulation that I throw in this. What would have been your dream match working whomever you want Remember to pick? Remember Sean. <laughs> you don't even have to finish. Well, Sean. But, and it was destroyed. But where and what stipulation would you have liked to have in a match? So. We were supposed to work together in WXW prior to her passing. And she was doing a match against the tag team. So it was her versus this tag team. And the boys were so afraid of Luna <laughs> that they didn't do what they were supposed to. So um, Luna just. Luna became Luna and beat the crap out of him. Um, and then proceeded to come back and yell at me because her dream was also to have something with me in the ring. Um, Luna became very much a sister as I grew in the business. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there I can't, I can't. Because, you know, right. I can't ever imagine going against her, tag teaming with her. Doing a six way would have been phenomenal against I don't care who and I don't care where. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can't answer you. I can't answer no, your you, question. You did though. You did because I I just got the feels through through the phone and the computer and everything that trust me I get. And I know what that would have and even that conversation that you had right now, I can feel it in your in your tone, in your voice and everything that yeah, so it, it could have been just go out and, uh, and play in patty cake, and it would have been amazing, right? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Throw a mop, throw a dustpan. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Best advice that you've ever gotten kind of behind the curtain about wrestling? <laughs> this should be good. Uh, don't hold back. You don't hear a lot of people saying that. Everybody's now in, in – let me throw this out. Like I've been around Al Snow. I've been around a couple other people, and they all tell you know the kids, shut up and listen or shut up and listen. Keep your ears open. Shut up and listen. And I hear that all the time. But what you just said is probably the best. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Francine once yelled at me. Um because she's like, you don't promote yourself enough. And I said, 
But Francine, if I don't want to promote myself, why should I? But she yelled at me because she didn't think I was. But yeah, no, the, the don't hold back. I got that from a couple of people. Yeah. Be true, be true to yourself. And that's marketing yourself essentially is what Francine was saying to you. Yes. Yep. And I know this is going to be rough. So give me maybe a top three, top five favorite opponents that you've had. And don't rank them because, geez, I don't want anybody coming after me. But at least throw some names out that you really loved working with. Psycho Bitch. Loved working her. Cindy Rogers. Um, Amy Lee. Loved working. I liked working April Hunter. I really did. Um, Phoenix. Beth Phoenix. Tracy Brooks, Gail Kim. I could sit and watch Gail Kim all day. Um, I'll say this real quick. I she's so underrated. She, re- I mean, people forget about Gail Kim. One of my favorite autographs I have on my wall right now is Gail Kim because missed, used in the WWFE, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Just blah. Yep. Yeah. Very. Yes. Yes. That she, oh, yeah, she has so much talent that, and they didn't even let half of it out. No, no. What she has done for Impact, TNA, whatever you want to call it anymore, uh, is amazing. Amazing. I'm glad you brought that name up. I really am. (laughs) Anytime. Um, Well, now let's throw in some men because I have wrestled some men. Um, I enjoyed refereeing Gene Snitsky's match, his matches. I've refereed his matches a couple of times. Um, and and part of that is because of the height difference, because he's like 20,000 feet taller than me. And he, you know, so. Legit just, monster. Yeah. <laughs> so just, you know, having a little five foot, five inch tall female in the ring trying to control him, you know, just psychology wise that's just it's funny um i enjoyed one time we worked the mess uh, as a tag team we worked the mess brothers and unbeknownst to anybody they came out in partial drag they put makeup on <laughs> <laughs> troy put on a, a blonde wig and had it in pigtails i mean it was just just for that alone, I have to throw them out there. <laughs> yeah. Never, never ref the beefcake match or anything. No, no, I came in way too late for that. Yeah, I, I know. I was just bringing him back around, just to <laughs> hope and dream, right? Look at your heart throb. He, he was, he was back then. I, he ain't no no more. <laughs> no, I know, and I have to make sure I. I show you, I have the barber shears on my elbow. So actually when I move my elbow, they cut. I don't know if you've seen it. Well, no, usually because no. I have a jacket on. So, yeah. Nope. Never seen it. <sighs> Before we get so to... Here's a que- no, 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 oh, no. Here's okay. a question for you. Okay. If I were to be put on that arm, what would my tattoo be? Uh, probably that titanium spoon. <laughs> With the with the inside the spoon, I would put the the Boston B then probably mm-hmm. so it really links everything together. There you go. See, all right. I had that answer. Boom! Right. Out of the ballpark. Yeah. So how so how many times have your guests asked you questions and interviewed you on the spot? None. That uh, once in a while we get a stupid "How do I eat cereal?" So let me ask you that: How do you eat your cereal in the morning? Because that's always been a running topic on Can Crushers. I don't eat cereal. Are, but when you did back in the day or whatever, I don't eat cereal. Okay. Do you? Would you put the cereal in first or the milk in first? I'll just throw that out there. I wouldn't do it. Okay. All right. All right. That's what. That's what the chef is for. Ah, uh, touche. Touche. 
All right, before we get into high ground, I have to ask you personally. Well, well, I, 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 I want to ask you another question. Oh, go ahead. All right, yeah. Really get to chat, like I said. What got you into the business? My grandfather. Uh, I would spend uh, I would spend summers over at my grandma and grandpa's house, and it was six oh five TBS. And for a while, I didn't. You know, I was young. I didn't understand it, but he was always yelling at the TV, yelling at Ric Flair and Dusty <laughs> Rhodes and everything. Then Grandma started yelling at both of us, so it was it was chaotic, and I love chaos. So, All right. Grandpa, yep. All right, favorite wrestler ever. <sighs> and you can't say me. Oh, okay. Um, that took a while to come because I loved everybody for a long time. But until I saw Calgary Owen, nobody mm. beat Owen for me ever. Oh, yes. That, yes, yes. That's wrestler. Yeah. If you want to throw caricatures, characters, I mean, caricatures, yep. because I'm looking at something right now. I'm a gnat, I told you. Um, I... The bad guy, Razor Ramon. I, I love stuff like that. Oh, Scott Hall was phenomenal. Yeah. So was an Owen. Yes. Owen and Owen is right there with Gail Kim. Underrated, under underused. Absolutely. Yep. That man had so much talent that and I'm sorry to say it, and people can argue it. I think if he was allowed to do what he could, I do think that he would have Brett would have been in his shadow. Yes. What, the group of guys at the young age of, you know, 18 to 21 that was at this house, you know, when it was my mom's house and we were all piled in the living room, said the same thing. And we still wave that flag now on Can Crushers that Owen would have throttled them. Love um, Brett. Love yeah. Brett. But, oh, yeah. But Owen was and still is 10 times better. If not more, yeah. but we're going to keep around numbers. Yeah. Unbelievable. He's on my arm as well, by the way, is the Blue Blazer. Because Aww. I love, I love the Blue Blazer. I love the Blue Blazer. Yeah, I got to meet him and his wife and o when OJ was, was just a little guy. He must have been like three. So, yeah. 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 Do you have more for me? I'll keep going. I, this is supposed to be about you, but I love this. Whole, somebody needs to interview me on my own podcast someday. <laughs> so when, why did you why did you not get into the wrestling business as a manager, a referee, a wrestler? Why did you take the route as high grounds ring announcer and podcast with Can Crushers? Tony Schiavone. I love mm. Tony Schiavone. He was. Everybody says, I mean, and don't get me wrong, Jr. when Jr. was good and Gordon Soley, and it, but Tony just spoke to me again. Yeah. It was TBS. I, I love everything about Tony, and yeah, Tony Schiavone. I, plus, I love communications. I like the back end of it. I, I love putting stuff together so people get the the product. So yeah, the behind the scenes, the. We did great live there in person, but let's do this and this and this yep. to make it all pulled together. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Don't get me wrong. I do. I love doing my monkey shines in the ring when I'm in the ring announcing, but give me the stuff behind the scenes, and that's where I nerd out. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. All right. So back about me. Okay, back about you. Um, Before we get really deep into high ground and what's coming up and Plans and da 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 da. Do you feel fulfilled with your career? The one regret that I do have is that I never was able to get into the ring with Luna. That is my one regret. We never had a match. We never tagged up. We never did anything together. And that's something that I know she wanted also. Um, but I, otherwise, yes, I'm I'm pleased with my career. I came into this not wanting to get into the WWE. I did not want to make it that big. I did not want to have to travel all the time. I did not want to have to go and get implants and surgeries and to be what 
the fans want. And I'm not saying that in a negative, but I am not TNA. A Barbie doll. Right. Yeah. Um, so no, I the the one thing is Luna loved all of our time that we did have together, but not being in the ring with her is the one regret. But otherwise, yes, I am extremely satisfied. Good. Good. I, I, I love hearing that because some others that have been like out of the business and they're like, well, I don't know. I really wanted to go here. I want to, and it's, it's the mindset of the, the same thing. And I'll tell you before you ask me and my career is baby essentially, but I wouldn't want to go there either. I have a family. I like, you know, say high ground does two a month or three a month or, you know, for a month, which is whatever, you know, if it ever, when it gets there, if it gets there, whatever, I'm three hours away or I'm four hours away. I know I can make it home that next day because family, and I'm, right. I'm going to keep pounding that down. It, it's, it's family, you know, they can come. I'm not going to California and missing a week or anything like that. So you're not going across seas. You're not going into a whole nother country. Yep. Yep. It's it's family forever. So yeah, and that's high ground. Listen, I, I've been, I'm a baby there, but I feel welcome. I feel loved. I feel hated by some people, but that's family. But even being the newest member of the high ground family, you still bring in a certain je ne sais quoi that other people don't people can still learn from you people can still teach you and that's what family is mm -hmm. you don't walk in knowing everything no and i'll never you say that I, I will practice until the day that i die and i mean something in my life i will practice till the day that i die because you right you can learn at the age of a hundred you know or or more but listen a hundred is the round number again you yeah. continue learning every day. Yeah. So practice. Practice what you preach. Practice what you do. So, yeah. Exactly. But, I mean, even you can still teach something to myself. You can oh, still teach something to Molson. I did. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Throw that out so, there. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. I do. Like, no, yeah. It doesn't. You could walk in, you know. The new guy who starts on the show, who it's their first time stepping into high ground, can still provide some guidance, some light, some direction and knowledge that somebody else might not have. Exactly. So, you know, you could be with high ground since it began. Or you could walk in fresh off of the, the street right now. Once you sign that contract, you are a part of the family. And I'm not saying the family as in like the mafia kind of thing. Right. But you're a part of the family. Yeah. And if, you know, we don't do bullies. Contrary to Molson's popular disbelief, we're not bullying. We don't want to see people bullying. You know, and that's that was something that happened. That's why he came out and started getting in my face. And you know what? He's going to learn his lesson. It, there we go. So let's turn this right into August 12th, the Falcon's Nest, summer meltdown. The card is shaping up to be amazing. By the way, we have junior heavyweight tournament action starting. We have a hair versus hair match and so much more. You just need to be there. What yeah. of any of those do you want to touch on? Because holy shamolies. Oh, I, I personally, I am looking forward to that hair versus hair because, you know, you don't disrespect somebody by doing what happened. And I'm not saying that I am for the dude. I am not saying I'm for young Fletcher. I, I'm not rooting or cheering for anybody but i am excited to see how this works out in the ring i am too these two i'll sit back as the announcer the whatever these two are going to bring the house down the they the are. animosity that they have and by the way 
I, I showed up at the training center to do some stuff behind the scenes with Molson, and I was essentially grabbed and uh, accosted by Fletcher that he, he's looking for the dude and he's taking it out and the ring announcer is just crazy. Absolutely. It's uncalled for. You know, you don't pick on somebody, and no offense, you don't pick on somebody who is not trained. Right. Well, Fletcher does. Fletcher well, is a different, a different breed. Well, yeah. We can definitely say that. Damn. But as a dude... Well, dude, definitely. Well, yeah, dude, definitely is, man, dude. Yeah, he really is. The junior heavyweight tournament starting. Names, you'll see them soon. Continue following high ground social media and everything. But how awesome is that? The oh, the matches are going to be outstanding. Yeah. Below, you know, if you want to revert, you know, WCW when it was the Luchas. That's what High Ground has with the kids. I'm telling you, they bring it. And I don't want to name names because I'm going to forget one or two. And I'm like, oh, man, I forgot about Wrestler X, essentially. And I feel bad because this junior heavyweight division, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, folks. And again, we're bringing people from the outside in for this. We don't want to just sit with the same cookie cutter matches. Right. We want to bring in new talent. We want to give fans different looks, different feels. We want to see what the fans want. And if you continue to show them the same group of people, they get bored of it after a while. Right. So right. you got to give them something new. And that is absolutely what this tournament is doing. Yeah. I saw some of the names and I'll tell you, they're going to blow you out of the water. So, August 12th, be at the Falcon's Nest. Is there something that you want to bring up that maybe we don't know? And I know the commissioner usually doesn't do anything like that, but I'm pandering now. Keep checking out Facebook. We will have some of those matches up on Facebook because we can't get all of these phenomenal competitors at a show. It's not going to work that way. So we are go we are doing everything that we can to try to get them at least up on Facebook. Yeah. Man, our social media team is amazing. They put together great graphics and everything like that. That's not me, so I'm not patting myself on the back before anybody says something like that. That's not me. It's other. We have a social media team that's unremarkable. They do great stuff. So, yeah, I'm super excited. Yes, and it's not me either. <laughs> no. You are too busy for social media, dear. You're <laughs> too busy for social media. Oh, what social media? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. You have it. I know I do. Yeah. You have to, well, you, because you kind of have to monitor that too, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I do. I do watch what's said about high ground, the good, the bad, the ugly, the wow, thank you for sharing just your side of the story. And I'm not going to even respond. We won't respond to that. You know, there are so many sides to a story. It's not just two-sided. And if somebody wants to go on and have a rant about high ground, that's because they didn't take the time to check out clarification or to talk to somebody. This is horrible. I'm really going to release something today, but uh, people know if they continue to, if they've listened to close to 500 episodes, when my mom and dad were getting divorced, my mom honestly told me there's three sides to this story, his, hers, and the truth. So take it as that, right? Well, there's more than that. Well, because there... it depends on how many people are involved. Well, yeah. you had a side. You had a side in that story because you had a view from a different angle than anybody else. True. And if you have siblings, they had a different angle. And your parents' parents, if they... You know, anybody that they went to had a side of the story. Right. No, it, I was keeping it low key. But yeah, you're right. There's a million sides that, and, <laughs> and it, you have to take. And we revert back to way when the beginning of the show that you have to pull these nuggets out of the grains of salt and say, oh, OK, and then piece them together. And yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Belladonna. Yes. I love you. I will say that to you right on air. <laughs> 
is there anything that I forgot that you wanted to cover or anything like that before I let you go? Because I, I know you're busy and you have stuff to do. Oh, stay tuned for the name of my Barracuda. That's all I can tell you. Yeah. Oof. I will leave that at that because we're friendly too. You are? No, I, that was that was sarcasm. <laughs> Look at that was sarcasm. There is a whole story that is not coming out anytime soon about my Barracuda. And yes, those bumbling fools call him fish boy, but that's only because they're jealous because they try to make their opponent sleep with the fish. I have control of the fish that can take anybody out. Duly noted. I am definitely going to say this again. I love you. I'm on your good side. (laughs) Again, thank you for joining me tonight. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. You too, and I look forward to seeing that sleeve of yours on August 12th. This is the Haas Kamani Professional Wrestling, Fletcher Young. You listen to Mark the Marks. Man, Mark the Mark, what a stupid name. You know, this guy tries to be in with all the wrestlers. It's no wonder why he calls himself the Mark. But check out his podcast, it's called Can Crushers. And uh, be sure to check Fletcher Young out on all the local independents. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Belladonna. Great road stories, getting to know her a little bit in her career. How about training with the Wild Samoans? That's unbelievable. One of the greatest tag teams. We talk about them all the time here on Can Crushers. What they've done for the business. And now you get that sense of family put into high ground from the Samoans. So the dynasty and all of that is unbelievable. And then uh, Boston proper. Uh, Apparently, I'm going to get a titanium spoon with the Boston B on my sleeve now too. I man, I'm running out of room, but I'll continue. I have another arm. Yeah, you know, uh, I love tattoos, so I'll continue going with that. But the gist of this, we got to learn a little bit about Belladonna. Gave us a little bit, reeled me back in. Didn't want to tell it all. Mysterious yet powerful. But we'll do anything for the fans at High Ground, and you're going to see that again. On August 12th at the Falcon's Nest. Man, that card is stacked. I can't wait till you get to hear it next week. Once it rolls over to here and I can bring you that preview show for next week. It will be awesome. Guys, had a great time. If you want to be part of Can Crushers again, reach out via all of our socials or drop us an email. Get you set up to have your own spotlight just like Belladonna. Just like everybody from High Ground so far. All the way back to Duke the Dumpster, Manny Fernandez. Go back and listen to the archives. They're all on there. I love it. I really do. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called the garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know. (laughs) 